My name is Marco Palma. I'm a professor in the Department of Agricultural Economics and the director of the Human Behavior Laboratory here at Texas A&M University. So the type of research that we do has a lot of different angles. Uh, most of what we do, about 50% relates to food choices and how that relates to nutrition and different outcomes related to uh, uh, chronic diseases like obesity and diabetes and how can we reduce the propensity of people to be, uh, to be at the risk of contracting these uh, chronic diseases. We're also interested in human behavior in general and so right now we have projects in trying to understand uh, self-control and how is it possible that some individuals are more likely to exert self-control and make better food choices, to make better decisions about uh, their savings uh, accounts, make, make better decisions about their finances, about their exercise routines, and so on. We're also interested in understanding how emotions drive our behavior. And that there's, that's a very uh, relatively new area. There's very little work done in economics in part because we didn't have ways of truly measuring in an objective way of emotions. So in that regard, we now have the tools to be able to uh, do very interesting and cutting edge research. So in the laboratory, we have 16 units that have the capabilities of doing eye tracking. And obviously with eye tracking, we're able to track exactly uh, the visual interest of participants in, uh, in a screen. Uh, we're also able to track the pupil size, which is a good indicator of engaging or emotional arousal. In addition, we also have the capabilities of doing facial expression, and this is very important because we're able to not only uh, observe what individuals are looking at, but we get an idea of their emotional reaction to whatever stimuli they're looking at. We also have the capabilities of in six of the units to do an EEG, and that's very important because we can get a very direct measure of the engagement, the brain's uh, biological reactions to different stimuli, and those are things that people cannot really change. Those are things that come automatic, and there's no way of trying to fake what happens in the brain. And so the, the ability of complementing these with uh, other uh, type of signals like uh, galvanic skin response, respiration rates, and other stress uh, signals, it's really very uh, influential in our work because it's not just one signal, but we are actually able to look at the whole picture. And when we look at uh, the whole picture, we're better able to understand and what's really driving the behavior of individuals. The role of emotions in helping the research has been tremendous because rather than spending a lot of time trying to do programming and investing effort in terms of time and resources devoted to design and experiment and doing very expensive programming, we now are able to just concentrate on what we do best, which is run experiments. And then the iMotions platform has been wonderful in terms of making it easy for us to design our experiments and we don't have to worry about the interaction or the communication between the hardware and the software, that's already done for us. So this really opens the door for us to improve what we do best, spend more time running experiments and publishing uh, papers and coming up with better ideas. One of the remarkable things about the team of iMotions is that they're not just interested in selling us a product or a service. They have been part of our success since the beginning. And I think that in some ways we go hand in hand, we go together, we have grown together, and we look forward to continue to grow together in the future.